Good morning and happy Sabbath, everyone. Ah, oh, only the two of you. Good morning and happy Sabbath, everyone. Better, better. My name is Rich Garcia. I'm the associate pastor here at this wonderful church, and it is my honor and my privilege to welcome you to our worship service today. Um, it's always an amazing opportunity to be able to worship in the house of the Lord, and I think it's a, it is a privilege to be able to do that freely and to also do that with brothers and sisters in Jesus. Amen? Uh, before we get into our announcements, I just also want to remind you guys that recently our church has uh, revamped our commitment process to partner up with God to pay off the remaining mortgage balance of our church. And so upon entering our church this morning, some of you may have received an envelope. Inside of that envelope is a commitment card that you are able to prayerfully uh, fill out so that we're able to partner up with God again, like I said, to pay off the remaining mortgage balance of this church. Um, if you fill out this card today, uh, you, will, you will be given the opportunity to place that commitment card in the offering plate when the, the time of offering does come. Uh, for those of you who are guests and friends of the San Diego Philam Church and you feel impressed to give as a one-time gift, uh, you can do so by grabbing a tithe envelope in front of you and writing your amount where it says Philam Plan. Uh, fill and plan is just a, a fancy way that we say uh, that 63% of that donation amount will go to our church loan, and the remaining 37% will go to our church budget, helping us pay for things like the electricity, water, etc. You're able to give physically through that tithe envelope, like I said, or you're able to give electronically through a website called AdventistGiving.org, and you're able to type in the name San Diego Philam Seventh-day Adventist Church, and the options are the same on that website as well. So again, if you were given an envelope, you are able to give uh, during the offering later this service. Today we are welcoming our family from the North County Philam Group. If you are from the North County Philam Group, can you go ahead and wave? Uh, are you guys here? Yes, can we all give them a round of applause, friends? Thank you guys for coming. It's always a privilege, like I said, to worship with other brothers and sisters in Jesus. So they will be uh, part of our church service this morning. And we'll also be having guest singers and hearing wonderful musical numbers from the singing group Binhi. So uh, hold on to your seats for that because it'll be a blessing. Later this evening at 6 p.m., our adventurers will be having a Christmas concert, a concert for a cause. Uh, it'll be tonight at 6 p.m., and I promise you, you will not want to miss it. There is an entrance fee of $2, and just know that that entrance fee will go to a good cause, and you are guaranteed a good time as you see the adventurers use their talents for the Lord. Tomorrow morning, between 8 a.m. and 1 p.m., we will be having another small group leader retreat at the Mindoro residence. And so if you are a small group leader, please uh, contact me, Pastor Lim, or even Uncle Ray to remind us that you are going so that we have an accurate count of everyone who will be attending our small group leader retreat. Again, it'll be happening tomorrow morning from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. Next Sabbath, December 16 at 11 a.m., our children's ministries will be in charge of the Christmas program. There will be a play, there will be fun things that we'll be doing, and we'll be seeing the little ones here at our church use their talents for the Lord as they remember the reason for the season. The weekend after that, December 23 at 11 a.m., our church will be having a Christmas cantata, so you'll see all the musical people here at our church use their talents to uh, celebrate the Christmas season, so I want to invite you to that. It'll be an amazing time. Our music ministry is working very hard to providing a Christ-centered and excellent program for our community. And on December 30, we'll be having guests from the Philippine Maester Singers coming to do a sacred concert on the morning of December 30 at 11 a.m., so uh, please come here to see that. Later that afternoon on December 30, we'll be having an agape feast for all of us to consecrate ourselves for the upcoming year. And later that evening on the 30th, a very active day, uh, the Philippine Maester Singers will be doing a gala concert for you guys to enjoy. In short, all of these announcements are to say that this church is a very active church, amen? amen. Uh, and so uh, if you're able to come to one of them, please come. If you're able to come to all of them, please come. Uh, thank you, everyone, for being here again. I pray that God is able to speak to us this morning.
excited to be ordained as an elder this weekend. So that's pretty cool. Nice. Queer eight. What's something fun about yourself? Well, you know, San Diego. As you can see, I know you can't see anything yet, but San Diego is really fun. Um, I, I like the outdoors. Love taking photos. You know, anything from tennis, basketball. When I'm not hurt, and pretty much everything outdoors. Nice. You sound like a fun guy. I try to. <laughs> well, Kuyere, what is something that you look forward to experience as an elder at Philip? I would love to really, you know, start like a ministry as well. And one of the things that when it, before, before coming in an elder, we did something we have to present to to our fellow elders, and visitation was one of them. So. I like the starting like a you know a friendship ministry where I can really get to know new people, maybe older folks, whatnot, you know, and just really get to know more people that are in church and you know in a different kind of level setting. Nice, awesome. Well, Kui Ray, we're so glad to have you, and let's hear from our next elder. Hi, everyone. My name is Gemma Rama Banan, and I will be ordained as an elder. Well, it seems like we're at the mall. What are we doing here? Yes, uh, this is the Kapwa Christmas celebrate, uh, celebration, and I come here every year to celebrate with this group. It is the oldest club walking program in the country, and it is sponsored by Paradise Valley Hospital for the community of San Diego. Wow, so it seems like you're really involved in the community here. Oh, too. yes. Yes, I am. Um, what is something that you hope to accomplish as an elder at our church? Well, that's a very inter interesting question. I think going into an eldership is going to be a big adventure for me. Every time I start a new chapter in my life, I take it as an adventure because I know God will lead. And I know I can't wait for the surprises that will come with this responsibility. So I'll let you know what I accomplish and what I experience as an elder as I go through it. Awesome. Thank you, Auntie. Let's hear from our next elder at our church. Hi, my name is James. James Ball. Call me Kuya James or Uncle James, but make sure to include James. Well, Kuya James, what are some things you like to do on your free time? Oh, free time? Of course, get enough sleep, eat, get to exercise a little bit, and of course, my kids, Jason, Jamelin, Amber, and then we always plan to like go, go out, like park or from Coronado Beach or where, wherever the kids will enjoy. Yeah, yeah. You seem like a fun guy, Korea. Just look at me, <laughs> right? Well, you, didn't, you didn't have to say anything. Just look at me and right. you'll have fun. Yeah. Well, Korea, what are some ministries that you help to um, provide help to here at our church as well? Oh, thanks for asking that. Yeah, currently, um, me and my wife are involved with a family ministry, as you guys have seen what we did and what are the projects that we have been doing. Um, also, sports ministry. I'm just overlooking the sports ministry. VBS is coming up next year, so I'm helping my wife with that as well. And also, the music ministry, which I heard the like, pastor, Lumanek, told me that about it and yeah i'm not a good singer but it doesn't have to be right i have good ears <laughs> <laughs> well thank you so much Kui james let's hear from our next helper hi i'm dina robles and i'm being ordained as an elder today nice and dina what is your favorite sabbath activity well sabbath activity here is in choir but i really decide to spend time with my grandchildren oh. as I have not been able to and I hope it will change I I want to have time with them not only in the house but out in nature I think since you're being ordained as an elder today what do you think it means to be an elder here at this church for me to be an elder is being a servant a servant leader where I'm fitted to, to do something to glorify God.
May I ask the congregation to please stand for our call to worship? Today's call to worship is found in Psalms 63. I'll be reading verses 1 through 5. O oh God, you are my God. Earnestly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My body thirsts for you. My body longs for you in a dry and weary land where there is no water. I have seen you in the sanctuary and behold your power and your glory. Because your love is better than life, my lips will glorify you. I will praise you as long as I live, and in your name I will lift up my hands. My soul will be satisfied as with the riches of foods. With singing lips, my mouth will praise you. And today, as we, uh, as a church, will now sing praises to your name. Amen. pray our loving father in heaven we honor thee we praise thee O lord for your goodness and for your love we thank thee O lord for your majesty and glory today O lord we humbly ask your holy spirit to be with us may your name be lifted up in our lives we thank thee O lord for giving us jesus who died on the cross Lord, we ask that today we we'll be able to worship Thee in spirit and in truth. In Jesus' name, Amen. amen. Test. You look so pretty and handsome. Hi, Miko. Good morning, boys and girls. Good morning. How are you guys doing today? Good. Good. Do we have any other words that we can use instead of just good? Awesome. Awesome. Are you excited? Give me another word. Happy. Happy. Excited. Excited? Great. Great, great, that's a good one too. Well, Auntie Lizelle isn't feeling so good. I'm a little tired. Who here is tired? Oh, you guys are not. You guys are going to be running everywhere. Yeah, you know what? I'm a little sad too. I'm sad because of everything that's going, around, uh, that's going on in this world. Some people are not nice, you know, and some people hurt other people. And now that Christmas is coming, some people don't have families to celebrate with. And you know what? That makes me really sad. But you know, it just makes heaven that much sweeter. Sometimes I wish that we can just go to heaven already. The Bible says there will be no more pain, no crying, and we'll all be walking on streets of gold. Wow, what a dream that will be. Hmm. Wait, I have an idea. Why don't we just go to heaven right now? 
Let's just go to heaven right now. Let me get my keys. Where are my keys? Pastor Rage, let's go to heaven. We'll go there. Can we, wait, can we drive to heaven? No. no. no? Well, we do live in San Diego. Who has a boat here? Huh, I have a better idea. You have a boat? Wow. Well, we'll just take a boat to heaven. I do get seasick, but I'm sure we'll make it. Can we take a boat to heaven? No. No? Ah, man. An airplane? You guys are so right. How about we take an airplane? I like Delta Airlines. What do you guys, United, American? Whoa. I'm sure they have flights to heaven. Might be a couple hours, but we'll get there. But how about something a little faster? I want to go to heaven like right now. So instead of a plane, wow, it looks like you guys know this story. A rocket. Whoa, Pastor Rich, that's a great rocket. Hmm. Can we take a rocket to heaven? Really? So how can we get to heaven? Well, you see, boys and girls, you can't get to heaven on a boat, on a plane, or even a rocket. But heaven is for those who love Jesus. That's a cross. Take it away, Pastor Rich. You see, when we follow Jesus, we are able to go to heaven. And you know, something that's so cool is that Jesus says that it is God's will for us to bring earth, excuse me, to bring heaven on earth because God wants us to do his will on earth as it is in heaven. And you're able to bring a little bit of heaven to somebody today by being nice to somebody, by listening to your friends, by sharing kind words with one another, and like what Atta Lazelle was saying, by loving Jesus. How many of you guys want to choose Jesus this morning? Raise your hands. Yes, yes, yes. By choosing Jesus, you are able to bring heaven to your world today. Let's go ahead and have a word of prayer, guys. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Father in heaven, thank you so much for loving us, and thank you for giving us the opportunity to love you. I pray that we're able to bring a little slice of heaven to our homes, to our schools, and even to our church. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, guys. Good morning, everyone, and happy Sabbath. We are so happy to be here today. We come from mostly Oceanside, Seventh-day Adventist Church, but of course, we're more happy to see you here, worship with us today. So please join us in singing. Um, it is the season now to sing some Christmas songs, so we chose some Christmas songs, okay? So please join us in singing um, our songs. We're just here to lead out, but we want you to sing with us, all right? Okay. Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Joyful all ye nations rise, join the triumph of the skies. With angelic hosts proclaim, Christ is born. 
born in Bethlehem. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Christ by highest and adored, Christ the everlasting Lord, late in time behold Him come, offspring of a virgin's womb, build in flesh the Joyce. 
places for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn all on your knees oh hear the angel voices oh night be fine oh night when Christ was born Happy Sabbath. Thank you for having us here, the North San Diego County Philam Group. We are very happy to be here today. We are composed of members of different churches in the North County, and we live in different places. We come from Carlsbad, Oceanside, Vista, San Marcos, Scondido, and even as far as Hemet in Riverside County. So our challenge is how to meet regularly, but despite this, with the able leadership of our beloved Mar and Blessy Mincha, so far this year we have been able to meet at least four times. The last being September 23, with 36 people attending. 
We were planning to meet again at the end of this year, but because of the holidays, people's availability is scarce. So we have to postpone that. Our group's objective is to be visible, available, and of service to the growing Philam population in the North County that are also seeking for a closer walk with Jesus. We are glad that we are here today again to participate in this special Sabbath. Very special because we also invited our friends from LA and Loma Linda area. First we have the Binhi, the Binhi group which was organized in the year 2000 from young singers from the Philippines led by their, uh, uh, by our friend uh, Don Bursi. And second, we have our friend, Brother Clifford uh, Pineda, an AUP ministerial graduate, a mental health provider, and uh, pastoring small groups and churches in the LA and Loma Linda area. He is also a member of Binhi. They will worship with us through their songs and praise, praises, uh, song of praise and testimony. Our friends and special guests from LA and Loma Linda, welcome to San Diego. Now let us worship the Lord through our gifts of, and tithes and offerings. In Galatians 6, 9 to 10, it says, Let us not weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have the opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. Let us pray. Thank you, Father, for your blessings to us. We count our good health, peace of mind, and material blessings as only some of the many gifts you have lavished upon us. Please bless these tithes and gifts that we are bringing to you today. May they multiply and be used for good. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <coughs> Do, do, do. Is 
was paid oh, by mercy's arms sweep the surrender and sweet the embrace sweet the forgiveness to one forever moment I uh, would like to ask for those who are able to please kneel Let us pray. Our God, we raise the loudest hallelujah today in your presence. You deserve all the glory and praise. We adore you. We sing praises to you and we worship you today, longing to seek your face with our hearts open wide. We are just so amazed by the glory of your grace and the beauty of your mercy. We are in awe of your goodness. We have turned our backs from you a thousand times. We may have failed you, but still your faithfulness remains. You keep covering us by your grace. 
We are so unworthy, Lord. So we ask you first to cleanse our hearts. Forgive us all our sins and create in us new and pure hearts. Lord, we lift up toes in our neighborhood, in our city and in our church and the whole world. Remember us in these times of trials and tests. Help us remain faithful to you and remind us of your promises and unfailing love to us. Enable us and strengthen us when we become weak, Father. Be our source and guide and protect us from danger and help those who are sick. Touch them with your healing hands and restore their strength and health. We also pray for our leaders, pastors, and all the members of the church. Deepen our love for you and for the people around us. Guard us from evil and from giving in to temptations. Raise up leaders who will serve you faithfully at all costs. Strengthen each family and those closest to us, Lord. May our love for you help us to love and forgive others and make a difference in our world. In this very moment, we are here to meet with you. Come and meet us, Father. Remove any distractions and let us hear your words through our speaker today, Brother Clifford Pineda. Bless him and may your Holy Spirit fill his mind and heart and help him reveal yourself to us. Fill this place, Father. And in very special way, Lord, we pray for the success of all the activities lined up at this church. Especially the Adventurers Christmas Concert for a Cause hosted by the Adventurers Club that will happen tonight. May you use all the children and bless their talents, O Lord, to be of blessings to people and help them grow according to your will. May we support one another, for we do all this to bring glory to your name. So many needs, Lord, but you are adequate for every need. Your name is powerful and your power is great. So it's in your name that we pray. Amen. And we came to this point to recognize the dedication of our elders to be ordained this morning. And uh, in one of the commitment service that we did, you already accepted the roles and the responsibilities of an elder. 
And I believe with all my heart that you have understood and accepted those responsibilities and you manifested your desire to follow the Lord in that ministry through your signature. And we are not going to go through that anymore. But there is really one single thing that I want to highlight for you, Ray, Gemma, James, Atidina, and your spouses and and, uh, and, and sons. My invitation for you as you serve is to serve out of the overflow of your relationship with Jesus. And that you are able to do this through your personal devotional practices. And the uh, we as Seventh-day Adventists have been known, and I hope that we will continue to be known as people of the book. There has been a period in time that if you see somebody walking with the Bible, that must be a Seventh-day Adventist. And it's, it's, it's not just, it's not just a, a reputation. It is supposed to be a lifelong pursuit for you. And for all of us, church family as well. So, beloved candidates for ordination, I encourage and challenge you through the words of the Apostle Paul in 1 Timothy 3, 1 to 7. And before reading this, of course, the spouses are really very, very vital in this role. In the New King James Version, it reads, it reads, 1 Timothy 3, 1 to 7. This is a faithful saying the Apostle Paul writes to Timothy. If a man desires the position of a bishop or elder, he desires a good work. That is very, very encouraging. You desire a good work. A, an elder or bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, Temperate, sober minded, of good behavior, hospitable, able to teach, not given to wine, not violent, not greedy for money, but gentle, not quarrelsome, not covetous. One who rules his own house well, having his children in submission with all reverence. For if a man does not know how to rule his own house, how will he take care of the church? Of God. Verse 6, not a novice, lest being puffed up with pride, he fall into the same condemnation as the devil. And verse 7, moreover, he must have a good testimony among those who are outside, lest he fall into the reproach and the snare of the devil. Church family, I am now going to lead them into a litany of dedication. And with the, uh, the copy that you have, I want you to prepare that so that we are able to do this in an uh, orderly manner. And before God and your church family, we are now going to proceed with this litany. Ordination candidates, do you believe in your heart that you are called by San Diego Philam Church and therefore by God to this office of elder? Yes, yes, yes truly, truly, with all, with my, all my, heart. my heart. Do you believe the books of the Old and New Testaments to be the word of God and therefore the standard of our faith and practice? Yes, yes, yes truly, truly, with, with all, all my, my heart. heart. Will you be diligent? In your study of the Holy Scriptures and aim to serve out of the overflow of your personal devotional practices? Will you intentionally and consistently pray for God's people and lead them by your own example in faithful service and holy living? I, I will, will and, and I ask, ask God for His empowering grace. grace. Will you accept the church's order and governance? Submitting to ecclesiastical process as stipulated in the church manual. 
I will, and I ask God for his empowering grace. Will you support the vision, mission, and values of San Diego Philam Church and make it a priority in your leadership and influence in our church community and beyond? I will, and I ask God for his empowering grace. At this time, I would like to call the elders to please uh, assist in our dedication. May I have the elders to please come? Please come forward a little bit. All of you, I mean the uh, husband and spouses, please come. We will have the elders come. Where are the other elders of our church? Please uh, stay at the, the back of the ordinance. Okay. So church family, we are going to enter into this dedication prayer. And um, each of the ordination candidates are going to be specifically prayed for. So... As we kneel, breathe a prayer for them as well. Let us do that. Let us pray. Lord, God our master. It is a privilege to come to you on this special moment we understand. As a church family, we are humbled and yet honored by your mighty and holy presence in this worship place. Today, we are presenting before you men and women whom you called in the first place to serve your church, which was purchased by your precious blood. We are grateful for the way you have orchestrated their lives as they now enter into a life of service as an ordained elder. Lord, this moment, I pray in a special way for Brother Ray. He's been the leader in our church for so many ways. And for so many times, he's been leading part of different ministries. Today, Father, it is my special prayer that you grant him the humility. Grant him the wisdom, the strength. And Father, also I pray for Melody and Jordan as they are also part of race ministry, as the elder of this church. Father, we thank you and bind them. And also, Brother Ray, for his service to the, this church, Philam. Thank you, Father. And all of that prayers may be in, reach, reach into your throne of mercy and grant him also the peace and understanding. Amen. Father, I want to lift up a special prayer for Auntie Gemma Banaag. Father, she is a leader in her community, a leader in her workplace, and a leader here at this church. God, I know that it is not by chance or coincidence that you have called her to be an elder here at this church, and today we acknowledge that. Father, I pray a special um, prayer of protection upon her, upon her family. Um, Lord, I pray for her sons, Riley and Ryan. I pray, Father that they, as, as part of Auntie Gemma's family, are able to keep her accountable. I pray, Lord, that Riley and Ryan are able to remind Auntie Gemma when, when it is okay to rest, when it is okay to take time for yourself. And Father, I know that Auntie Gemma will continually support her sons and to be a leader in her home. Father, I pray that you would protect her heart, for leadership is a lonely road. But God, we travel this road not by ourselves, but with you. And so, God, as they hold each other, as their family holds each other tightly, 
I know, Father, that they're only able to do so because your arms are wrapped around them. Protect them, Father. Protect them. All in Christ's name. Amen. Dear Lord, I continue with this prayer to dedicate and surrender my brother James. Lord, I appreciate the time, this opportunity to serve with him. We appreciate the fact, we appreciate his time, that he was here, and that uh, he's here tirelessly serving you. I pray for him, O Lord, in many facets. As an elder of this church, may you give him the help and the strength as he continue to serve you and dedicate himself to you. Be with him, O Lord, as, as he work with the other ministries, the other programs of our church. I thank him and I thank you, O Lord, as a collaborative, for him being as a collaborative partner in family ministries, as a servant for your sports ministry, and as a worker for the BBS and the adventurers. And Lord, I pray for him as a family man. I pray that your love continue to bind his family as they continue to serve along with his spouse, Amber, and his two children, Jace and Jamelin. May the love that you impart to them will be overflown to our church. And Lord, I pray for him as a professional. May you continue to use him and his healing hands as he provide healing to those who he take care for and that this healing ministry that he fulfill be also be manifested unto our church. Bless him, O Lord, and that his God-given talents, strengths, and abilities would be to, be to be put into good use as we continue into serving you. We praise you, O Lord. Continue to bless him as we patiently await for your second coming. Father God, it is a great privilege for me to pray for my dear sister, Ati Daina. You have called her already many, many years ago with her husband, Kuyadem, Pastor Robles. You have walked through with their ministry in the Philippines and over here in the United States. And in this particular moment, you have called her to be an ordained elder of San Diego Philam. You know the desires of her heart. I pray that you continue to strengthen her, give her wisdom continually. And I pray that whatever her hands finds to do, the things that she loves to do for you, for other people, and for this church, may she continue to find joy and satisfaction in those. And I pray that as Pastor Dem, along with Atidina, continue to serve not only this church, but other people as well. Continue to walk with them, O oh Lord. And now, O oh Father God, we are entrusting this, your children, as we are separating them for ordination as an elder. Lord God, you know them specifically, personally. You even know the very numbers of, her, of their hairs. And I ask, Father God, that you will continue to just strengthen, encourage, and give them experiences that will inspire them to continue to serve you. And as we lay our hands over them at this very moment, O oh Lord God, we implore you, O oh Holy Spirit, to dwell and be poured to their whole being at this very moment. May you accept this solemn dedication may you prosper whatever they do for your name's sake for kingdom's sake may you bless our congregation because of their leadership and influence and as a result of an overflow of their relationship with you thank you so very much father god for hearing and accepting our prayers your will be done always we ask all of this in the mighty and powerful name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And everybody said? Amen. Amen, amen. and amen, amen, and amen. 
as the binhi are going to be rendering the commit the, the song of dedication we are going to be giving them the certificate of of uh, dedication as well Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions. Day Oh. 
Good, good morning, church. Good morning, church. Good morning. Oh, there we go. Uh, the name of the group is Bin He. Um, you probably know what it means. It's a Philippine word for seed. The group was formed in the year 2000. They were okay. Then I joined in 20, 2001. They got better. <laughs> and then he joined in 2003. It just made it all even. We're the best. We're the best. <laughs> now, kidding aside, we are happy to be here with you today. Um, we thank the invitation. Well, who came up? Me? Ah. Yes, we thank the person who invited the group. <laughs> We've been here before, but it's been, of course, my fellow Gomenian, Kiyomar Mutia. Yes, thank you, Mar. We've been here before, but it wasn't, I think we sang on, in the gym, I, as far as I remember, or yeah. in high school. But thank you for having us. It's been, it's been years, and we thank PMR for inviting us here. Hopefully, we'll be able to come more often and be able to sing songs for you guys. We are short at the moment, not height. Well, <laughs> this two right here are tall. But, yeah, we ha one of our people are, aren't here. Um, we're, there's seven in the group, and he's an... Uh, Mike couldn't make it, so uh, we had to change some lineup of the songs, but we prepared uh, beautiful songs for you guys and uh, uplifting, and hopefully it will help you in your Christian journey. Mm -hmm. The next song we're going to do is a song entitled, I Believe in a Hill Called Mount Calvary. Cling 
at three in the morning with a call you never forget or a note comes with a confession you have no cause to suspect when you feel the fear of a confidence betrayed or hear news that breaks your heart that ruins a holiday. Faith makes a way. Faith to stand makes a way. When others fall apart. Faith makes a path. Faith makes for a heavy, hurting heart. When we can't see past a moment, hope remains a prize.
Give me today I want. Hear and answer, God from above. So may the Spirit of God prepare our hearts for a message. Good morning, happy Sabbath church. Kindly bow your heads with me for a word of prayer. Our Father in heaven, we praise you, we thank you, O Lord, for thou art our God. Lord, we humbly ask your Holy Spirit to be in our midst today as we lift the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus. Amen. I told the group to sing eight songs. And then I said, I'll be just sharing a 10 minute talk. But this morning, they told me we're decreasing it only to five songs. I said, why? because we're giving you 12 more minutes for your sermon. <laughs> so today we'll just be sharing with you only five songs. If ever you would like us to share again songs, kindly invite us again next year. More songs, more songs. So thank you, Binhi, for the message in song. Faith makes a way. You know, last night, I asked a five grader to help me make an art. Who happened to be my daughter, she's in grade five. I said, can you help me uh, paste this on this cardboard? She said, No, Daddy. So today I'll be showing uh, art that looks like a kindergarten art made by me. So what comes to your mind if you see these colors? I have here green. The other one is yellow. And the other one is red. Traffic, lights, yes. It's important for us to understand that when driving, all of us should obey the traffic laws and the signs. When you see this color red, it means you need to stop, stop. And when you see this color yellow, it means, <laughs> what? <laughs> what did I hear? Speed up before it turns red? You need to prepare to what? Prepare to? To stop. Yes, that's good. You know, some of us, especially uh, the dads, when they see this color, to them, you know, this color means speed up before it turns red. Green yellow and red you know in our christian journey god is also telling us to go to be ready and to what to stop if you have your bibles with you kindly turn it with me to Luke chapter 9, verse 20. By the way, James, thank you so much for sharing the reading of our scripture. 
What does Luke 9, 20 tell us? It is Jesus who said this. Who do you say that I am? Who is Jesus? Jesus to you? Who do you say our Savior is? Who is Jesus to you? My Lord and what? My Savior. My Lord and my Savior. Turn your Bibles to Exodus chapter 3, and I'll be sharing a short story. Uh, kindly time me for 10 minutes, okay? And flash the red <laughs> color, okay? Telling me it's time to stop. But still, I have that green, right? Okay. If you have your Bibles with you, turn it with me to Exodus chapter 3, and I would like to share this reading. It's about Moses. He was 80 years of age when he was tending the flock. Verse 1. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the back side of the desert. And came to the mountain of God, which is called Horeb. And Horeb is also known to be as Mount Sinai, where God gave the Ten Commandments. Let's continue the reading. Verse 2. And the angel of the Lord appeared. Who is this angel? This chapter, in this verse, appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burnt with fire, and the bush was not consumed. So here Moses, taking care of his sheep. And he noticed, and he noticed that this bush was burning, but it's not what? Consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt. And when the Lord, this verse is telling us, Verse 4, that the angel of the Lord is the Lord himself. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. What does it mean if your mom calls you two times? Huh? Are you in trouble? Samuel, Samuel, Jacob, Jacob, James, James. What does that mean? If you hear your name called two times, James, James. And the Lord called him Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. And the Lord said, draw not nigh hither. Put off thy shoes from off thy feet. For the place whereon thou standest 
is holy ground. Moses, don't come close. This place is holy. When we come to church, do we honor God and give Him all the respect? That God wants us to give him. In John chapter 4, verse 24, it says, God is a spirit and you must worship him in spirit and in truth. Meaning to say that when we come to this place, to this sanctuary, God is telling us, I am God. That when we come to worship Him, we must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Spirit and in truth. If you come to this place to worship God, not in spirit or not with the guidance of the Holy Spirit or the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, if you do not have that, you are not worshiping God. When you come here to worship and you don't worship in truth, you are not worshiping God. Because Jesus said, worship God in spirit and in truth. Then Moses, when he heard the voice of God telling him, Moses, wait, don't come nigh. For this place is what? is a holy ground. But those of us who are sinners, when we come to Him, we sub when we submit ourselves, God will accept us no matter what. Once we surrender our hearts to Him, He will bless us and He will accept us. If we willfully what? Humble ourselves before His throne because he is God. He is God. Verse 6, moreover he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was af afraid to look upon God. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. God knows everything about us. And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of the land unto the good land and the large unto a land flowing with milk and honey unto the place of the Canaanites and the Herites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hevites and the Jebusites. Okay, let's go to verse 9. Now, therefore, behold... The cry of the children of Israel is come unto me, and I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppress them. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee, Moses. Come, I will send thee. And this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee, Moses. When thou hast brought forth the people out 
of Egypt, ye shall serve God upon this mountain. But take note, verse 13. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers hath sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is thy name? Lord, you're sending me for a very special mission and to deliver them out. Where? From bondage. But Lord, Moses said, Lord, what am I going to tell them? Who are you? What is your name? What is your name that I shall say unto them? 14. And God said unto Moses, I am that unto the children of Israel, I am had sent me unto you. And God said moreover unto Moses, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob hath sent me unto you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. You know, in verse 11, Moses said, Lord, you're sending me. But who am I? He's asking God, Lord, I was once a prince of Egypt. For 40 years, I was there. And now I spent my time here in the wilderness, another 40 years, making him how, how old? 80 years of age, and you want me to go to Egypt and tell the people of your people, Israel, and tell the Pharaoh, thus saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. Did God answer him when he said, Lord, who am I? Verse 12, God said, I will be with you. The answer he heard from the Lord telling him, it's not about you, Moses. It's about me. And my promise is, I will be with you. Isn't that so amazing? If we receive that promise, God telling us, you don't worry about your life. Trials may come our way. Diseases, financial challenges, or even death. But God is telling us, you, listen to me. I will be with you. Just like what the, the disciple asked him. Or Jesus, when he talked to the, to the disciple in Luke chapter 9, Jesus said, who do you say that I am? Moses heard who God is. God said, I am the great I am. Because in chapter 3, this great I am is none other than Jesus, our Lord and Savior. And there are some texts still have two more minutes, right? I'd like to share with you who this great I am is. 
Jesus said, I am the Word. John 1.1 1, 1. I am the light of the world. I am the bright and morning star, Revelation. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, who is, who was, and who is to come. I am the bread of life. I am the living water. Jesus is the bread of life. Jesus is the living water. Jesus said, I am the vine and you are the branches. I am the good shepherd. I am the spotless lamb. I am the way, the truth, and the life. John eleven twenty five. There is hope in Jesus. That when we die, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and life. Genesis 17, 1, Jesus said, I am God Almighty. If God is with us, who can be against us? No one, nobody. Because Jesus said, I am God Almighty. I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life, because He is the great I am. Soon this great I am will come and he will come again. Whether you like it or not, he will come again for he has promised us, John 14, I will come again and receive thee. That were I am there, ye must be what? Also. Are you longing for that day to come? Lord, please come soon. The King of kings and the Lord of lords, Jesus, our Savior, will come again. Are you ready for that day to come? Are you ready for that day to come? And who do you say your Savior is. My friend. He is my friend. He is my Savior. Today, brothers and sisters, God is calling us each day. God is calling us each day to sometimes reflect that there are times that we need to stop. From what? And God is also telling us that we need to be ready and prepare to be delivered. And today, God is telling us, continue loving, sharing, ministering to your fellow men. That when that day comes, Jesus will say, 
well done and faithful servant. I pray that all of us who are here now, that when Jesus comes again, all of us will be there in that heavenly home. Would you come with me? Jesus said, do not worry, for he is God. He is the great I am. Let me call again my, my brothers to share a closing number entitled, These are they who have come out of great tribulation. Soon, in these last days, our faith will be, will be tested. Keep holding on. Stand for the truth that you know. Because standing for the truth is standing for Jesus. Give up all the dead that are in them, the graves open wide to set captives free, and those who are roaming the earth rise to meet them Abraham's seed as the sands of the sea These are they who have come out a great tribulation they
Shall we all rise for our benediction? And now, brothers and sisters, may the love of the Father and the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the companionship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. In Christ's name, amen. Dismiss us, Lord, with blessing we pray. Thus from thy worship we go our ways. God